Hey, what is going on, SMT Nation? It's your boy, the SMT. We're going to talk quickly about the CBRS that's making the news. CBRS is an incredible mid-band uh, spectrum. It's it's in a couple of different forms. There's general access, uh, which you know any carrier, first come, first serve, could use it. Verizon is using it. T-Mobile is using it. Uh, we're also going to be seeing licenses getting deployed this year, and those are the PALs, Verizon, T-Mobile, uh, as well as Dish. They've got some too. Anyways, it's going to be a great uh, mid-band that's going to really help with capacity across the country for a lot of carriers, also in private networking too. So the real drawback as of right now is the power, how you know it's, it's kind of a low-power transmission at this moment in time. That should be changing very soon. So with this push from the CCA, a representative and support group for smaller and regional carriers, CBRS, the 3.5 gigahertz spectrum, could be an important mid-band that could become more suitable for commercial consumer MNO networking, Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, DISH, you know, even the private networking. It's going to be a huge capacity boost for them, huge capacity potential, but that one drawback, the low power. So that low power obviously kind of limits the propagation characteristics. You know, it limits the range. It limits indoor penetration for the signal. Obviously, you think about low frequency signals and their high power renditions. They've got huge reach and uh, incredible propagation characteristics into buildings. So the CCA is specifically trying to advocate to see a class or category of CBRS get cleared for higher power transmission. Now, here's why this is important. They're not the first entity to do this. Other companies are, other entities are in the private sector as well as in public and commercial. This would create a more ubiquitous use case scenario for CBRS in which we would see large-scale CBRS adoption. And obviously, if the FCC is on board with it, it's pretty much a wrap. So uh, once that commission is going to make that official, we know that it's a go. We would like to see that happen sooner rather than later. So really, if the public's best interest is to kick up the power for CBRS, that just makes Band 48 that much even better, right? So we're super excited to see this happen. For the U.S. operators, it's huge efficiency benefits. Uh, You're probably going to see Band 48 deployed at a grand scale on macro sites, those big tower sites, not just small cells. And, uh, you know, with that high power, no gap between macro sites, right? So it's going to have that improved range. So at low power... Obviously, it can only go so far. It only has so much reach. It helps some people. But if we can increase the power, we can increase the reach. And it would eliminate any coverage gaps between macro sites. So a company like Verizon and T-Mobile, AT&T, and especially Dish, as they build out their new network, this would benefit them greatly. Uh, One last thing. T-Mobile actually is not big on CBRS anymore, Uh, obviously, since... um, You know, they came across the 2.5 gigahertz with the Sprint merger. Obviously, they don't even want to see the CBRS go high power anymore uh, because that would make their competition have a more enhanced use case of CBRS and Band 48. So, um, but yeah, AT&T, Verizon, Dish, you know, it would be a huge boost for their networking and it would improve the connectivity and it would help consumers. It would help customers. So I don't really care about T-Mobile's case. I don't. I'm not going to let T-Mobile's personal interest get in the way of a Spectrum asset that can help people, especially on all those other carriers. Anyways, let me know what you think of this news. Let me know if you think it's going to happen. I think it is now that it's got all this positive momentum, and you can see that the FCC appears to be on board, public entities and support groups, the carriers, they're all on board of CBRS going high power. So I think it's going to happen. I've been advocating for this for a couple of years, and I'd love to see it. Tell me what you have to say on this. Go ahead and drop me a line in the comment section below. Uh, also, down in the comments uh, in the description box is a link for the Patreon page where I discuss more details on the, the different signal strengths and the details of the story and how that frequency works. So if you're looking for more access to stuff that we do here on the YouTube channel, take it to the next level. The SMT Patreon, link down in the description box. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video. Peace.
Thank you for taking this opportunity to watch the SMT YouTube channel. If you appreciated this video, give it a like and a share to all your favorite social media platforms. Thank you in advance for that. Also, check out some of the links in the description box. We have the SMT Patreon page. We also have the Twitter handle at Sneed Tech. And do check out the audio-only podcast available on all the major podcast platforms. And if you are new and have not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and activate the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload from the SMT. We'll catch you on the next video. Peace.